I have waited. Now think about this. We shot the angle first part of November of 88, and it's now late July 1989, and I finally get the chance to get even in storyline with Paul Lee just so that we can close the chapter of that unfortunately poorly written book. And the night before, we're in Philadelphia. It's the Midnight Road Warriors and Dr. Death against the Freebirds and the Samoans in a bad street, street fight, 10-man match, and there's people everywhere. And Terry Gordy, I jump up on the apron to get out of the way of all the brawling, and Gordy decides suddenly to pick up the ringside table. <laughs> I mean, an eight-foot fucking lunchroom table. He's going to throw it in the ring to add to the chaos, but I'm standing in between where he's throwing from and where he's going to throw to, and I jump off the ring, and when I do, I land That's my left knee, knee goes out. Yeah. Even with my knee braces. Oh, my fucking God. Because I had no ACL in that knee either. And when it goes out, it goes sideways. It goes, bends sideways the way it's not supposed to go. And it tears cartilage and starts bleeding in there. And so I'm like, oh, fuck, i got to wrestle tomorrow. And Paulie and I had, you know, some shit we wanted to do. We didn't want to tank it. So I iced it all night. When I got back to Baltimore, I was staying there. My wife was with me at the time, actually. And the next day, we get to Baltimore, and it's stiff. And I can't bend it very much at all because it's swollen up. And I wasn't going to tell anybody, you know, exactly how bad it was because I was afraid they'd cancel a match, and right. I wanted to get even. And also, Paul Lee and I were still jack. We're going to have this fucking... Because we wanted to have the fight that two managers would have if they really disliked each other. We didn't want to make it funny. We didn't want to make it look like we were goddamn Flair and Steamboat and be leapfrog and tic-tackle and flip-flop, but we wanted to make it look like that we were two managers that didn't like each other mm -hmm. and wanted to have a fucking fight. <laughs> so they even came in and they heard something about, I'll turnbuckle, you know, I'll run your head in a turnbuckle or something we were talking about. And, you know, even Kevin Sullivan was on the committee at that time also. And he said, oh, yeah, you know, do some comedy, whatever, make it funny. And I said, okay, we ain't going to make it funny. After all, that we've sworn on our mothers and fathers that we hate each other. And even the boys, we had the boys believing we hated each other. And this is before we actually did. Um, you know, we weren't going to go out and stink the place out. And now I've got one leg. And I was the experienced worker in the fucking mat, which shows you we were also in, in trouble. <laughs> so I scrounged up. And this was back when you couldn't find pain pills in the locker room because nobody took them, and if they did take them, they didn't bring them to the fucking match. And so I scrounged up from two or three different people, uh, maybe a Percocet and a stray fucking Vicodin and maybe an anti-inflammatory, just took whatever the fuck, so my mouth was so fucking dry. And I took an ace bandage, and I wrapped it up as tight as I could, and I put my knee brace that I already wore on anyway, so th the circulation, my foot, I'm surprised I didn't get gangrene, I cut the circulation <laughs> off, but that knee was fucking wrapped, right? And you watch the tape. I'm walking down there, I'm slapping hands with the fans, but I am gritting my teeth because I am not going to limp because right. I don't want to give it away because I'd sit next to you and I, or you and me, or we're Paul Lee and me, right? For three hours, we're talking about what the fuck we could do and blah, blah, blah. And I told him, I said, as soon as I get in the ring and I'll fucking try to do something and I'll get your jacket and when I turn around, throw the powder in my eyes and blind me and then take that phone and hit my knee as hard as you can a number of times because the knee brace will protect it, right? right? I said, please, please hit the brace, but hit it as hard as you can. So watch the tape, folks. What's the first thing that happens? He blinds me, I go down, I lay the fucking leg out for him. He goes, starts hitting the wrong leg. <laughs> now you see me, and it takes the first couple minutes of the match. You see me whispering to him. You see me grabbing him, trying to pull him over to the right leg. Then he just starts hitting up both my legs, right? I'm like, the other leg, the other leg. So now I can limp, right? So I sell through the whole thing. The people, surprisingly, were with the match. If you go and watch the tape, they're reacting to it. And, you know, I throw a pretty good punch, and, and he was doing his thing. So we had him into it for a little while, and, and I can't walk. And finally, I told him, I said, when you punch me, because Paul's punches look like shit. I said, when you punch me, just really punch me, but punch me in the side of the head here. Don't fucking punch me in the face, but hit me as hard as you want to. I mean, don't just try to give me brain damage, but hit me as hard as you want to in the side of the head. Well, of course, he's trying to do this fancy Scott Hall open the hand at the nick of time thing, and it looks like he's slapping me. And I'm t I can't take a bump for him, because I can't even feel him. I'm trying to sell backwards with one leg. Finally, I make the comeback. Out of those shots in the comeback, watch it on YouTube. One of them is a live round, but the other ones were beautiful. But but I because I throw a pretty good punch. But then where I really got him back was when I get him down on his knees and I'm doing like this, right? 
I, I can't, I've only can stand on one leg. I can't really put weight, so I can't switch, so I'm really not in his head. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I rip his clothes off, and he runs off. And 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 even Jim Ross and Bob Cottle were doing the commentary. They and at sure first, were. they were trying to play it for for comedy. But then they actually had to kind of because I was selling my ass off, right. and they had to kind of get into it and start treating it seriously. And I got a big ovation, and that closed my chapter there with with Paul E. And then we go out and have the war games. Well, this match does include. You've watched it back, so you know the most homoerotic call ever in wrestling when Bob Cottle says. <laughs> All right, let's get some clothes yeah, off. Yeah, let's, let's start getting some clothes off here. I know yeah. <laughs> we're trying to work as best we can like we hate each other. And look at you know. the two in the ring when we get that call, huh?